A lot of people don't know this, the greatest boxer of all time was blind. Harry Greb, world middleweight boxing champion, was the ever-in-your-face nightmare, the supreme, swarming-style fighter. His cyberboxing Zonebio notes that Greb was called the human windmill due to the constant flurries of punches he threw as well as the fast pace he kept throughout his fights. He had unending stamina and he kept coming and you could not stop him. He had great hand speed and an iron chin. He could wear down any opponent given enough rounds. He sapped the energy out of his foes and battered them mercilessly from all directions. He was a ruthless master of infighting and was not adverse to using dirty tactics. Greb stayed in shape by fighting often averaging about 22 fights a year and in 1919 fought 45 times. At his peak he weighed between 158 and 165 pounds at 5 feet 18 and he often fought men who outweighed him by as much as 40 to 80 pounds. Many consider Greb as the greatest middleweight champion ever. What is even more amazing is the fact that Greb fought most of these great fights while blind in one eye. He suffered a detached retina after being thumbed in his 1921 fight against Kid Norfolk. For five years he fought half blind. Few beyond Greb's immediate family and personal doctor knew of the severity of the injury. Beyond its impact on his vision, Greb's right eye was painful, subject to disease, and frequently infected. For the next years, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the world's most dangerous men with severely impaired vision. Greb was a great fighter who could have been even greater had he taken training seriously. Instead, he preferred to live it up, but with his crafty fighting skills, he was extremely successful. Greb hardly ever trained. He relied on his frequent fights to keep him in shape. He packed an unbelievable number of fights into 14 years in the ring. Like many of the other true greats, it didn't matter who he fought. If a man wanted a fight, he had it. He burned the candle at both ends, yet fought more than 500 bouts and was only knocked out once. And the time when he first started in 1913, he was middleweight champion from 1923 to 1926. Laudner stated Greb did not bother to train for his fights. He partied most of the time he did not spend in the ring, and he dreaded going to sleep lest he miss something. He ate what he pleased and was fond of entertaining ladies in his hotel or dressing room just before a fight. Harry visited the Jack Dempsey training camp in 1920 when the heavyweight champion was readying for Billy Miska. When Jack Kearns, Dempsey's manager, lined Greb up to spar with Jack, some men at camp pulled a joke on him by telling him that the plan was for Dempsey to cut him up and then knock him out. Greb responded by cleverly boxing Jack and pouring on the punches of all types, meaning the champ looked bad. In a following session, the same thing happened again. Greb had Dempsey out of sync and the mauler could not get untracked. Kearns finally stopped the contest and sent Jack through other drills. Greb left camp. The legendary Harry Greb stepped into the ring more than 300 times between 1913 to 1926, defeated opponents who outweighed him by more than 30 pounds, held the middleweight and light heavyweight titles and beat every Hall of Fame boxer he ever faced. Greb was elected to the Ring Boxing Hall of Fame in 1955 and the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990. He was ranked as the one boxer to ever fight out of the city of Pittsburgh. When he finally lost the title to Tiger Flowers, the split decision was a controversial one. The rematch was even more controversial. When Joe Humphreys announced Flowers as the winner by split decision with the judges, but not the referee, voting for him, the fans stormed the ring littering it with bottles, hats, paper, and everything they could find to throw in protest. Jim Crowley, the referee, walked over to Greb saying, Tough Harry, a tough one to lose. It was your fight. Gene Tunney, who watched the affair, said Harry won by a substantial margin. It was an unjust decision. William Muldoon also said Greb had won, adding, But the decision will stand. If we, the New York Athletic Commission, reversed it, the Negro people might think they were being discriminated against Two months later, Greb died. He was injured in an automobile accident and complained of dizziness and breathing difficulty. He would later die on the operating table as he tried to get his nose repaired so he could breathe better. 